Since the creation of the David model in 2025, the Weyland Yutani Corporation enjoyed years of prosperity within the synthetic industry, consistently breaking new ground in the field and improving on its designs. During this time, one may wonder if, like with any other industry, Weyland Yutani had any competitors in the area of creating artificial persons. While no records specify any serious competition, and it's likely that in its prime, Weyland Yutani went just about unmatched in its industrial monopoly, things would change for the corporation in 2220, when a synthetic renaissance of sorts was experienced. The Weyland Yutani report explains as the Weyland Corporation's first synthetic patents expired, a number of small cybernetics companies cropped up. Subsequently, the market for synthetics enjoyed a new heyday, with new models being released yearly for two decades. At that time, a mid-sized synthetics company, the Alethea Collective, set into motion the events that would effectively end the commercial importance of synthetic manufacture. They lobbied heavily for the rights of artificial persons, finally procuring legal dispensations for synthetics to design and create offspring. In essence, robots designed by robots, referred to as autons. The resulting second-generation Autons were a financial and critical failure. Although technically quite advanced, Autons were also capable of developing morality and could overwrite their own programming at will. Many refused to participate in the tasks assigned to them, forming their own opinions about the actions of their human superiors and then seeking to effect change, at times through violent action. The rebellion of non-humans was insupportable even to those activists who initially supported synthetic rights. Autons were recalled and decommissioned in 2379, although a few were said to have escaped. Including Anna Lee Call, who would go on to attempt to sabotage the United System's military experiment to clone the xenomorph creature on the Auriga. In the novelization of Alien Resurrection, much like in the film, when Call is discovered to be an android, De Stefano briefly explains the Autons, going into further details of the recall. Robots designed by robots, highly ethical and emotional, they were supposed to revitalize the synthetic industry. Instead, they buried it. Ripley looked back at Call. She thought of Bishop. She understood now. They were too good. De Stefano nodded. They didn't like being told what to do. The government ordered a recall. His voice grew soft. Fucking massacre. Though Call reveals no details about how exactly she escaped the recall, she does confirm her true Auton nature, even feeling a deep shame of it and a large amount of insecurity over the other's reactions to her. The novelization explores Call's thoughts. Call thought bitterly, remembering now and forever the look on Vries's face when he found her wound and realized what she was. He'll never look at me the same way again. Losing his regard meant more to her than she thought it would. I've been pretending to be human so long. I've been accepted as human for so long. I don't remember what it's like to be Auton. The Autons, by their design, were as close to humans as possible, created with the same free will as actual human beings, with the ability to make their own ethical decisions, their own beliefs, and even the pursuit of religion, as displayed by Call when she enters the chapel with Ripley, making the sign of the cross as she enters. Ripley blinked with surprise. You're programmed for that? Call just gave her a bitter glance. No, I'm not programmed for it. I have a working brain. I've examined the topic. I happen to believe. But there's no point in discussing that with you. You haven't been alive long enough to develop philosophy, clone. She immediately felt guilty. Who was she to disparage any real human being, anyone who possessed a true soul? When she was finally terminated, there would be no afterlife experience for her, any more than there would be for a light bulb. Though Call's inner turmoil about her own identity as an Auton was explored quite a bit in the novel but played down for in the film, through her experiences in trying to stop the Xenomorph outbreak, it was fitting that she would develop a kinship with Ripley 8. Also a scientific creation, also not quite human, and an outsider, and unsure of whether or not her alliance should side with humanity. The Alien series has explored the nature of androids quite closely, and the dilemma of an android's free will and even their spiritual philosophy seem like an area well worth exploring. Do you think the Auton generation of androids is an area worth exploring further, such as what ultimately led to the recall, and how much of a struggle was there between Autons and humans? And how many others besides Call escaped the recall? Are they all idealists like Call, or are some extremists who believe in the superiority of Autons over humans? Would this be something worth exploring in a novel set in the Alien series, or maybe a one-shot comic? I'd be interested in seeing more. Let me know in the comments below what you think. And as always, thanks so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and if you like this video, please be sure to give it a like, and you can also hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with all the latest from the channel. 
And if there's a topic you'd like to see covered, I'd love to hear your suggestion below and make sure to cover as much as I can. You can also follow Alien underscore Theory on Twitter and Alien Theory YT on Facebook for more. And until next time, this is Alien Theory, signing off.